Hello, this is Double A with another NBA Super Card video for the date of Friday, a correction, Thursday, February the 4th. I didn't think I'd ever be doing another NBA Super Card video again. Did one at the debut, wasn't too thorough with it, so didn't air it, didn't redo it because most of the magic had been gone. But I've been seeing a lot of people have questions about how to play the latest or newest event to NBA Supercard, and that's Court Domination. Over on the WW Supercard, we are, we know this as Ring Domination. In here, it's the same premise of that. I tried doing a video before, but it got lost in the translation, so I'm going to try to do this again for explanation purposes. So the object of the game is to unveil shards, which unveil the card that you're going for on that particular tier. Myself, I'm at Emerald, so I won't qualify for the event card. If you're up in Ruby, then you're able to go for whatever this week's event card is. Um, in this particular game, it's more playing yourself than playing against another person's deck. You know, a person's deck is there to to provide a bit of a challenge, but for the most part, you're playing against your own deck. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and just use a pick double here. I have a network error in the process, but we'll get back into this real quick. So we're gonna go in, in here, gonna bring the board up. Now with this, it never tells you what stat it is until you actually play until you actually make your selection. But with this option, essentially you're gonna see five car, five spaces on the board. So you're gonna get a stat boost if you play, you're gonna get a stat boost if you play within that particular position's area. So like I said, it's gonna be more or less choosing to fight your cards than the others. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna take a look and see what my cards are right now. In terms of my left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, down arrow, because that's gonna be dependent on what you're gonna be playing against, if anything at all. So if for instance, I, if this board was full, for instance, and I played something here, then I'm not gonna be fighting against someone because there's no one to the right of me, because as you can see, there's a right arrow on the bottom of the card. For purposes of this, I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna take my lowest stat. Now, if I had arrows on here, if I had a left arrow, right arrow, down arrow, up arrow, then in this particular case, I do. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that there, right in the center. Computer's gonna play that. And depending on what stats get chosen, so in this case, I won based on the stats that were chosen. If he had taken me over that, then I would have played either an up or down. So for instance, let's say for instance, the computer took that center spot. So right now I'm down two to nothing. So what I would have done next is to then play this card here, because with that right arrow, it's gonna take it's gonna take on that center square and try to get that spot back. And then I would just alternate trying to get that center square back, because once you get the center square, then the rest of it should be fairly easy to finish out. But in this particular case, since it hadn't, I am going to... You could choose to play against a card or not. That's completely up to you. You could you could not challenge, you could challenge, you could make it go faster, you can make it move slower. If you do take all nine squares, then it's a perfect game. You get extra picks of shards off the board. Right now, I am going to play... I'm going to, I want to take that square back. That, or take this square around right here by playing there. And I should be able to get that square pretty easily. Because my stats are bigger than the other. And with this one, it doesn't really matter whether you choose men or women. All cards are basically the same in this one. So it's basically going to be your top, your top scoring cards. So it's not going to make... It, you'll see inner gender matches in here. So right now I'm looking at this right now and I'm going to go ahead and play that there. There's no cards I could have gone for. So basically I could play that there. I could play it at the bottom. In this particular case, I'm up 5-3. So all I have to do is just pop that there. I've won the board. So now it's going to take me to the shard screen. 
And I've already unveiled some shards. I tried doing this before, but ran into issues. But I'm going to go ahead and unveil the shards. Now, when you unveil the shard, it's going to basically give you the highest tier as a reset. Or whatever the tier reset would typically be. In this particular case, I think it's going to be gold. Anything gold or higher, that's going to reset. So right now I'm still... Oh, so I've unveiled a shard. I've gotten a reset. In this particular case, a gold Doug McDermott. So now the board's going to reset itself. You can prepare it to pick more shards. Now you complete the... Now you continue the process until all your cards are obtained and if you're getting the event card you keep going until that's unveiled and you finish the week now over on wwe supercard there's a thing called an heroic stage which essentially go through the process again it's just you're looking to play for a higher static card in terms of in terms of making the card just a little bit better i'm not sure if it's going to be in this since it's fairly new but but we're going to play one more game, just so that you have an idea what's going on here. So right now, I'm not going to choose any pick doublers. Pick doublers, if you use them and you win, you get eight squares off the board, eight shards that you choose. If you don't use a pick doubler, then you're only choosing four. Like I said, mentioned four, it's a perfect game. Then you choose five as a, as a non-pick doubler. And if you have a pick doubler, then you get ten cards in a perfect game. So let me show you another plan that I do here. So right now I'm looking at my cards, left, right, up. I don't really have much in terms of a left or right arrow, but I do have a lot of up and down ones. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna take this one and play that there. Computer's gonna play its card. And... And it looks like I've won both squares. Now, if that had, if the computer had taken my card, then I would have played this one right here. Because as you can see, it has higher stats. So it will win that spot back. So I'm just going to pretend that that I'm winning the card back. So right now, the computer plays its card. Its defense against offense. Computer wins the square back. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play that right there. Like I said, you can challenge, you can not challenge. It's completely up to you as to what you want to do. So, in this case, I've won that car, won that particular spot. I've won not only the one that I was in, retained I should say, but I've also won the spot that the computer was trying to take me off of. So I'm just going to finish it off by doing that there. Computer's gonna try to take my square again. Or it's gonna try to take that square. It winds up doing it, but at this particular case, it's four to four. All I have to do is just play that. I've won that particular square, and I've won five four. So therefore, I'm getting the maximum picks that I'm allowed based on what I've got, either doublers or not. This should, this, I should only be picking four shards out of this because I didn't use a doubler. Okay, so I hope I've done a good job of explaining this to you. If you have any further questions, if you try, if you need better understanding, drop me a comment in the box below. If you do like this video, throw a like on it. Um, I'm not sure whether or not to tell you to subscribe or not, because I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing other videos later of the NBA Supercard. I just wanted to put this out there because I've seen a lot of people on the NBA Supercard board have questions about how to play or get a better idea of how to maneuver successfully this game so that they could be successful. So if you want to subscribe, feel free. But otherwise, I'm not really asking for it this time around. So until next time, if there is a next time, this is Double A with, with NBA Supercard saying see you next time and keep reaching for the stars. Goodbye, everybody.